My name is Patrick McNally and I'm running for the City Commission in Cedartown. I have lived here for a great number of years and when I first came to uh, Cedartown I noticed people were out in their gardens barbecuing, having a great time. I heard laughter, plenty of jobs were available, good incomes were available to the people which enabled them to buy homes, go on vacation, buy automobiles, help their children go to college. But over the last 15 years, especially over the last five to seven years, I have noticed a great change. I, I've seen a, a city going from poverty to pro, uh, from prosperity to poverty. And I look around and I ask myself the question, why has it gone like that? And I've noticed that certain elements within the city of Cedartown thrive on poverty to the extent that they deprive people of good jobs so that they will not be able to do, do the things that I've already described. While they have flourished, there's 46% of the population of this city living under poverty, under the level of poverty, 32% living slightly above it, which means almost 80% of the population are living in poverty. And I find that is absolutely disgusting. And the city commission passed and the ones that are running today should be ashamed of themselves to see a city like this. Uh, go from prosperity to poverty. The reason why I've decided to run is because I believe I can help things much better here in Cedartown. As an Irishman who have, who's lived here for many, many years, who knows a lot of people in the town, every one of them are frustrated with the policy that has been in place for a great number of years. And some of the changes that I would like to see is, for example, I would like to get rid of the present development authority. The development authority is appointed by the city commission. And these people meet once or twice a year when, in actual fact, they should meet at least once a month and be accountable to the uh, city commission for what's happening. Have an agenda, know what direction they're taking the city but they have brought no factories in here. The only thing that the uh, Development Authority has done over the last uh, five years is put up one sign coming into Cedartown. Now, I would like to bring about a new Development Authority. No more than six people, men and women, from all colors, black, white, Hispanic, people who are aggressive, and people who have concern for their own community, so that they will ena help enable them to bring about factories, factories that can pay good incomes. The average wage in Cedartown at the present time is somewhere around 10 to 11 dollars an hour, maybe 12 dollars an hour, if you're working in some of the factories for the last 10 to 15 years. I remember going back and doing research and I noticed that our shirts, for example, Jefferson Smurf, they were paying 12 to 15 dollars an hour 20 years ago. Now the income of the average working man has gone down, while the income level of a certain group of individuals has quadrupled. But yet, look at the cost of living. That also has quadrupled over the last 20 years. How can you educate children? How can you pay for your homes? How can you buy automobiles or even do ex build on extensions to the homes if your income is that low. Now, for the very first time I have noticed in the last two year, maybe a year and a half, I have noticed people sleeping in the park, Peak Park, people sleeping on the streets, people sleeping in derelict buildings. Now, do you not think there's something wrong with the way Cedartown has dropped from that type of from prosperity, that type of poverty, and yet no one's helping them. That's why I sincerely believe that people help people more than the local government or indeed the federal government. So it comes back down to what are we going to do? How are we going to continue uh, to survive and to have uh, good productive families. It all goes back to work. It goes back to having a good income and a good income 
best so the families can continue to live the way their fathers and grandfathers lived, earning a good income to support their family so the dead in turn could continue to be doctors and lawyers and teachers and nurses. But right now, there's hopelessness in most of our societies. And in, in, especially in the city of Cedartown, you have mass unemployment, a very small group of individuals are making a living, and you have 10% of the population in Cedartown have to leave the city every day to find work elsewhere. Now, what do I propose that we can do to help bring Cedartown back on the path that it was originally on? Number one, I would propose that we get rid of the Development Authority. I want to form a new Development Authority and organize it in such a way with a smaller group of men that would be more aggressive. That they would approach Development Authorities in different cities and also Development Authorities that represent foreign companies that you will find in all large cities in the United States. We make approaches to them. We bring them into Cedartown and we show them the advantages of setting up their factories here. A good labor force, good access to roads, police, fire, hospitals, good colleges. Also, what we need to do is we need to set up, while we're bringing business from the outside in, we also introduce what's called microfinance. Now, what does microfinance mean? Microfinance is where the city government itself, through the new development authority, will take a look at ideas that the local population may have to form a new business. And after looking at it and examining all the different types of uh, prospects that that city or that company could, could go forward with, we would actually invest monies and we would, re we would gain an interest on that investment over a, a period of time, maybe a three-year period. We would ask for maybe 1%. There's lots of businesses here that we could set up. For example, the manufacture of soap is very easy to manufacture. Air fresheners for automobiles, that's pretty easy. And also shampoos. Also what I would like to do is that I would like to introduce what's called a watch committee in the city. A watch committee would be made up of two blacks, two whites and two Hispanics. They would meet with the commission once a month and the police chief to discuss all the problems in the various areas that these people represent. Also we would like to know about the police department. We would also like to know how they behave in these areas. We would like to know if the population in all three areas mentioned, if they have any problems from the police that we can sit down and discuss and look into. Also, I do not want and would support any idea that we could put together to stop young boys and girls being sent into the prison system under the age of 18 for nonviolent crimes. I don't think it's just or morally right for young boys and girls to go in that direction when we can take them and put them in the direction of education, mandatory community service and give them a hope for the future. By putting them into the prison system, what you're actually doing is you're creating people that will grow up in that environment and who will come out worse than what they went in. I also believe that in the commission here, in the city commission, I sincerely believe that two terms is sufficient. We should not have any more terms than two. And the reason for that, it cuts out any type of favoritism. It cut, makes everything work better where people will have more trust in you. And I also believe that the people that are commissioners in the city of Cedartown should not take any type of pension. And the reason why they shouldn't take any pension is because usually people working on the commission for the city of Cedartown 
most of these people have pensions from uh, banks, teaching positions or business. They don't deserve a second pension. I believe that if these people love Cedar Town the way they say they do, I really believe that they should give up those pensions and put it back into the central pension fund for the people who are in the fire service, who work on the streets or in the parks, they should have a better retirement uh, than what they're getting at the present time. I really believe also that it is very, very wrong for people to go out and vote for their friends because they're friends or for people who happen to be black or happen to be white. I think as a community or Hispanic, I think as a community, people should get together and understand that we're, we're all living in this town and we all have the same fears and loves for our family. We should all pull together and try and make this city a better city for all our people to live in, all our children, our grandchildren, the generations that are yet unborn. It's what we do today will make their lives better tomorrow. And I hope that during the election that will take place on the 5th of November, I hope that all of you will remember one thing, that the future of this city lies in your hands lies in the way you vote and take it away from a small group of individual, individuals who really believe, who sincerely believe that this is their city, they, will, they can do what they want with it and they can nominate certain individuals to run for the commission and they will do their bidding. So on the 5th of November I'm hoping that you will step back and forget about all the good old boys let they be white or let they be black or Hispanic. Choose wisely. Vote for the future. By voting for me, I promise one thing. I will promise hard work. I will bring decency back to the city. I will bring back employment to the city. And that I promise. And if I cannot or will not do what I promise, I will make this to promise to you. I will not seek another term if elected. So on, I hope on the 5th of November that you give me your number one vote. And God bless you and God bless your family and the future of the city of Cedarton.